Imagine you have an intern in the clinic that listens to you while you are talking to the patient. And that intern doesn't only help you to finish your notes, but also can write you emails that you can send to other healthcare providers and even create patient handouts. Well, let's call that intern Heidi. Hello everyone, my name is Ruben. I'm a hematology oncology physician and I'm very interested in innovation in healthcare. And in today's video, we're going to review an AI scribe tool called Heidi. Without further ado, let's go jump to the video. In this video, we're going on a systematic matter. We're going to review their website, their security compliance. We're going to put them under a test with a standardized patient and much more. So let's jump in. Let's go to the website. One of the first things you're going to notice is uh, they are HIPAA compliant, PIPEDA compliant, GDPR compliant. As you can see here, um, because uh, HIPAA compliance is important for patients or people in the U.S. HIPAA is a federal law that establishes the national standards for protecting patient information and personal identifying information in electronic medical records. And the equivalent of HIPAA in Canada is PIPEDA, and the equivalent of HIPAA in Europe is GDPR. Uh, so they, they are compliant with regulation and rules um, in different countries, which is really nice and really reassuring. Now scrolling down, they have uh, healthcare or physicians or clinicians using their software in 35 countries. Uh, here they claim that 50% of clinicians' time is not spent on patient care. I would even say more. For me personally, I spend 20%, 30% with my patients having direct patient care. 50 to 70% is in the background doing notes, doing orders, arranging care, arranging home care, and other things. One of the unique things is it doesn't only... Uh, record and take notes but it can also customize the way the note is written what do I mean by that so if we scroll down a bit more um, so here you can create your own instructions uh, to Heidi where Heidi can perform or write a note in the way that you like in medicine we have general guidelines on how to write a note right uh, usually the note is a structure where you have the past medical history past surgical history medication allergies family history and then history of present illness, physical exam, blood work, imaging, impression, and plan. But that being said, despite these general guidelines, we notice that there is a huge variability among physicians in writing their notes. Some physicians have very long notes. Some physicians have short and concise notes. And it depends on how you like to write your note. You can train Heidi so the output can meet your expectation and meet your style. And this is something unique I see in Heidi and I didn't see in other companies that they have AI scribes as well. Um, and here they are emphasizing again how they have a strong security in place to protect patient information, physician information. This is the clinical case that I'm going to eat my centralized patients to perform with me while we're testing Heidi. I'm going to scroll through this case quickly. If you want to read it, you can stop the video and go through it. However, in summary, it's a 65-year-old patient who's coming with cough and shortness of breath secondary to COPD exacerbation. Okay, so this is the recording session. Uh, we have the standardized patient and we're using a MacBook Pro uh, laptop. Uh, the physician and the patient will be 50 centimeters away from the laptop. We're not recording the screen of the laptop with a third app. So um, the microphone of the laptop is only being used by Heidi. That being said, you can access Heidi through your phone's browser, but they don't have a dedicated app for iPhone or Android, but you can go to a Chrome browser or Safari browser and access Heidi through the browser and record the session if you prefer to have a smaller recording device rather than a laptop. We are using a Chrome browser um, also, um, and here we can decide we're going to do the structure. It's going to be history and physical, and we're going to start recording. If you want to skip this part, you can go ahead and you can go immediately to the review. Okay, we will start recording by three, in, in three, two, one. Hello, Mr. Dome. My name is Dr. Rabashian. I'm one of the physicians working here today. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you, doctor. 
Uh, so, so, Mr. Dog, one of the nurses told me that you came here for shortness of breath and cough for a week. Uh, what's going on? Yes, I've been just coughing much more um, and feeling really out of breath and tired. Um, and I've been coughing up. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, let me figure out what's going on and I will start you on treatment to help you with your symptoms. So, when did this cough start? say about a week ago okay and like do you have a cough and that's got worse or is this cough new for you i do cough a little in the morning but now it's it's much worse much more frequent okay and uh is this cough like productive is it associated with phlegm or sputum yes i'm coughing up some phlegm okay what color is it it's green okay and um, do you also feel winded or short of breath Oh, yes. I feel very out of breath. I can't, you know, do my woodworking. I can't go to my garage and, and do that. I get just so fatigued out of breath. Oh, um, that's cool. You are woodworking as well? Um, me too. And uh, for oh, how long really? have you been? Yeah, for how long have you been doing woodwork? Well, since I retired, really, it's my new hobby. I used to be a mechanic and, and now I, I do woodworking. Okay, okay. Maybe we can talk more about it, like once we figure things out for your cough and shortness of breath. Um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, th this cough, is it associated with any chest pain? No, other than just coughing. Okay. Uh, any feeling of heart racing? No. Okay. Any fever or chills? No. Okay. How is your appetite? Oh, fine. Okay. And uh, how, how do you feel your energy levels are? Well, when I get so out of breath, it, it takes some energy out of me. Okay, okay. Um, that must be exhausting. Yes. Okay. Are bowel movements okay? Yes. Okay. Anyone around you has been sick recently? No, I live alone and haven't been seen anyone okay. too much. Okay. Um, uh, do, do you smoke or did you smoke in the past? Yes, I smoked for about 30 years and I quit 10 years ago now. Okay, good for you. That's that's really impressive. Yeah. Um, the, have you had any similar episodes to this one where your cough gets just like out of control? Yeah, yeah. About two years ago, I came in for feeling really out of breath and they told me I had... Maybe COPD, I think it is. Yes, yes, yes. So did anyone prescribe you or put you on any puffers? Yes. Did you, okay, do you have your puffers with you by any chance? No, I forgot it. Okay. And do you take your puffers on a regular basis? Or do you take them on a daily basis? Do you take them as needed? Like, what's the story? When I feel I need them. Okay. And do you have a puffer that you take on a regular basis? Yes. And are you compliant with taking those puffers? Well, I forget sometimes. Okay, okay. And do uh, you have any allergies by any chance? No. Okay. Any recent travel? No. Okay. And uh, what about uh, drinking alcohol? Uh, yeah, I have three shots of whiskey before bed every night. And um, for how long have you been drinking three shots of whiskey? All my life. It helps me get to sleep. Okay. Have you ever to try to cut down or stop? No, it seems to work well. Okay. And uh, have you ever felt guilty about it? No, it doesn't bother anyone. It gets me to sleep. Okay. Okay. Have you ever tried or like had alcohol first thing in the morning? No, no, not in the morning. Okay, okay. Um, would you, so as, as your physician, like, I will help you with your cough and shortness of breath, we can figure that out, but like, would you be interested also to talk about maybe quitting or like down titrating or decreasing the amount of alcohol? No, not really, it helps me sleep. Okay, okay. Um, maybe once we figure out your cough, we can talk more about it, but let me examine you. Uh, if that's okay with you. Yeah. So uh, I have the nurse here, like she told me that she took your vitals 
and your oxygen saturation uh, is around 89% in your blood and your blood pressure is around 140 over 86, which is good. But your respiratory rate, uh, the pace of your breathing is a bit higher than usual. Um, it's around like 18-ish, 19-ish. Um, let me listen to your lungs quickly. Okay. Um, so it sounds like you have some wheezes on both sides of the lung. And uh, the lower part of the lung doesn't sound as loud. It's more, it's, it sounds more quieter. Uh, let me listen to your heart quickly. Your heart sounds normal to me. I'm just going to feel your stomach. Um, any pain when I press on your stomach? No. Okay, okay. Um, so, Mr. Doe, it sounds to me like what you're explaining and what you're describing, it's another exacerbation of your COPD and probably because you are not taking your medications as it should be. You have, we have several, two, three types of puffers. One of them you have to take on a daily basis. And from our conversation, I, I think you are on the daily one, but let me double check. I'll try to see if we have any records on outside pharmacies. So I'm just going to ask her to come and draw some blood and do an imaging of your lungs. Uh, would that be okay? Yeah. Yeah, but like, uh, in the meanwhile, I will also give you some antibiotics and we will start you on puffers. We will also prescribe oral uh, pills. They are steroids. This is steroids help to dilate your airways. Uh, usually you have to take them for five days. Uh, would that be fine? Yeah, sounds I will, good. I will also bring one of the puffers with me. I just want to see how you take your puffers. I just want to make sure that you are using the right technique and like you are inhaling the puffer as you should. Would that be fine? Yes. Okay. Uh, once we're done with, uh, with this and your breathing is better and you leave the emergency, uh, I would highly encourage you to follow up with your primary care doctor like in a week or so just to make sure your symptoms are under control. Okay. Okay. And... Also, uh, I, I want to keep I I want you to keep eye on your symptoms. If things go south, your symptoms don't get better or something. I want you to come back to the emergency. Okay. Especially like if you have shortness of breath, that's not responding. If you have chest pain. If you, if you have fever uh, after we start with antibiotics, I would highly encourage you, encourage you to come back. Okay, I yeah. will. And when it comes to COPD, you know, like prevention is better than treatment. So you, we have to make sure that we avoid secondhand smoking, we avoid being in contact with people who have like illness or like flu-like symptoms. We have to also make sure that we follow up on our vaccination. And, um, and this is really important. Okay. Okay. Um, so I will let the nurse come in and do the blood work and bring some antibiotics and puffers. I and mean, I will be back with her shortly. Would that be fine? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I highly encourage you that once you leave the hospital, it's very important to adhere to your medications and uh, to set a reminder so to take those medications on a regular basis. Okay? Especially the puffers. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll put that in my calendar. And once I come back and your symptoms are better controlled, maybe we can touch a bit on the alcohol, but I want to make sure now I control your, I, I make sure, I want to make sure that your breathing is better. Okay. Okay. Nice meeting you, sir. Thank you, doctor. So we finished with the conversation. So now we're going to start the recording and Heidi is going to generate the note here. So now the note is being generated. Now, uh, since we finished the recording, I'm going to jump in to my computer. I'm going to record the screen and we can go through our review of Heidi and the uh, aspects that uh, we are going to review systematically. Now, let's record the screen and look at the note that was generated by Heidi. On this side, we have the note that was generated by Heidi. And on the right side, we have the script that I gave my Sandrice patient and I asked him to rehearse it. As you can see, Heidi did a good job. It really collected the important information that I would include in my notes. So I have a patient with COPD who is coming with COPD exacerbation and the most likely cause of their exacerbation is they stopped taking their medication or I would say poor medication adherence. So it really it reflects the discussion between me and the standardized patient. And if I scroll down and look at the management plan, 
It is similar to the management of plan that I already discussed with my standardized patient here. However, we have to keep in mind that this test was done in an optimal setting. It was done in a quiet room, not an emergency room, where we have beeper, and it is similar to other tests that we performed on AI scribes, and it was done where the patient and the physician are around 50 centimeter or around 2 feet away from the recording laptop. So far, I would say the accuracy for Heidi is 10 out of 10. Let's take a look at the user interface. So here on the left, we have a, we can start a new session and you also have access to your previous sessions. Of course, all these are untitled. You can change them, you can change the title and you can delete them. Um, and then here you can control the settings. And then here we have the integration with the electronic medical records, which we're going to talk about. When we have a conversation with the patient, the note will be generated on the left side and the AI scrap is located on the right side of the screen. Uh, looking at the user interface, I would, say, I would say it's easy and intuitive, although it has some complexities on the right, but the function of the uh, AI scribe requires to have these complexities. It's not as simple as other AI scribes that we've seen, but that being said, it does have lots of uses, as we will see in the next couple of minutes. One of the important things that makes Hyde unique and I didn't see in other AI scribes is the conversation with the patient is the main content, but Heidi can repurpose this content to different things. For example, that conversation can be used to generate a note, the same conversation can be used to generate patient handout, and the same conversation can be used to write an email to another healthcare provider. Not only that, you can structure, you can control the structure of the note and the degree of details in your note. For example, here, I change the structure to so, maybe I want it in a history and physical pattern, and here I want it in a very detailed way. Again, we have like only eight minute encounter and there is so much detail that it can be included in the note. So this is like history and physical, but what about we're gonna go and do issues. Um, so for example, so they already have some template and each template have different structure. So you can choose the structure that you like and you can work with it. And then you can use, you can choose if you want it detailed or you want it less details, okay? And as you can see, when we look at the assessment and plan, very good point, good job, Heidi, that first issue is the exacerbation of COPD. It did not include alcohol use or follow-up care as the first issue, no. First issue is what brought the patient to the hospital. The second issue is what led to the first issue, which is medication non-compliance. Also, it identified alcohol use as an issue. Uh, that being said, when we talk to the patient, as you, as you can remember, he said that he does have alcohol use disorder symptoms, but he never wanted to quit, and that was addressed properly, okay? And then also it talked about, high dimension how we arrange for follow-up care. So I would say it, it, it does a really great job in creating a good structure, and you can also control the structure. Other things that we have also on the left side of the page is you can include the patient name, you include their gender, you can add their birthday, um, and you can also skip this information. You can email this note to a colleague, you can copy this note, and you can regenerate it if you want. And finally, you can also add additions. For example, you can add some information from previous notes, you can add blood work, you can add imaging, you can add your signature to be incorporated in this note. So now let's move on to the right side of the page. What makes Heidi unique and different when compared to other AI scribes, it can repurpose the conversation and can create different outputs. What do I mean by that? Let's make it simple. So instead of going through these types of templates, let's ask the AI scribe, okay, write, okay, so write an email to Dr. Kelly to update them about this patient presentation to the emergency department. Okay, so Dr. Kelly is the primary care provider. Okay, and click enter. So now it is generating an email to Dr. Kelly about this patient. Okay. As you can see, it's in the beginning here. I'm writing to you to inform about your patient, Mr. Doe, President of the Emergency Department. Um, under my care, Mr. Doe. So that's a, that's a pretty good email. So if we go through the email, uh, what the patient presented with, 
uh, heat denied chest pain, shortness of breath. It is a bit more detailed. I would not include the examination. I would not include this. I would just say that this patient presented COPD exacerbation, and um, I would just advise him to follow up with you. Uh, it also mentioned that the patient reported alcohol use. Um, so it is a bit more detailed, but it's much more easier to have lots of details and then like delete the details that I don't need and then use this email as a template. So I just can copy paste, go to Outlook, go to Microsoft, okay, go to my email provider and paste this note, remove the things that I don't want them to be included and I have an email to Dr. Kelly, okay? Let's try something else, okay? Generate a handout to this patient, okay? And please advise them on the importance of medication compliance done okay let's see what happens now it's generating there mr doe uh, effective requires partnership between you and your healthcare team a key part of this is understanding and adherence to your medication regime why is medication compliance important prevent flare-ups improve symptoms enhance quality of life reduce hospital visits it's, uh, well actually it's, it's it's doing a great job Tips for remembering your medications, set alarms, routine. That's interesting. So this was not part of the conversation, but I find this very useful because I didn't. So I have to admit, as a human being, I did not go through the different ways of medication compliance. I just told the patient, okay, so you have to be compliant with your medication. But actually, I would say this is very comprehensive. It mentioned techniques that I didn't think about. And you can just copy this and paste it into a Word document, delete the things that you don't want and you don't think it fits, and give the patient their handouts. And I would say this is really, really good. Now we can also open a new tab and we can look at other uses of repurposing the note. One of the important things that is you can create a new template. And by new template, you can create your own style. You can tell the AI your style of writing notes and the AI can write notes according to your preferences. So when you click on create a new template, so either you import a previous note or you add a structure. For example, you can write uh, in the beginning, you want the history and physical, then you want a review of system, and then you want, for example, the impression and plan, and the impression we're gonna write issue one, okay, differential diagnosis, assessment, okay, and and plan and then we're going to write issue two uh, differential diagnosis assessment and plan so you can mainly create your own template or you can import previous notes where the ai can create notes on the similar style of previous notes and then you have to create next to create your own template so that's what makes really hide unique of course there are templates that we can't really apply here so from this conversation i'm not going to write an ot note or a physio note or um smart goals or but maybe from this note i can create a discharge summary let's see what happens there well the discharge summary is not the best but that being said it still created lots of things that i can use in my discharge summary one of the things that i didn't really like it didn't include results of investigations well i don't have investigation here because like let's say, uh, or to be more accurate, my note is not fully complete, so maybe I can remove the pathology, add the results of imaging and chest x-ray, which would be important in my discharge summary. One more thing I wanna add here, if you go on the left side to this panel, and if you click on integration, so you're gonna come to this screen. So Heidi can integrate to other medical records, and you can choose your, your medical records, so Epic and Cerner are very commonly used in the US, Athena Health is another one, so you can use, or you can choose, sorry, the uh, electronic medical record that is being used. And then let's say I wanna, I'm using Epic, and then I write the email that they should contact to organize this integration, or if you are the clinical decision maker, you can include that, and then you can submit integration request. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. This helps me to grow the channel. If you have any questions or any comment, please leave them below, and I will respond to you. And if there are any tools you want me to review in the future, please leave it in the comments below. I will see you in the next video.